Hello everyone, welcome to session three of four of our foundations course. Um, we're discussing Baptist distinctives. Uh, we are actually combining session three, which is regenerate church membership with session four, which is covenant community. Uh, we're doing this because the two uh, topics are so closely related as you'll, uh, as you'll see in a moment. But uh, you've probably heard of the term regeneration. It's a, sim it's a theological term that simply means that when someone gives control of their life to Christ, when they commit themselves to Christ, that uh, through his spirit, he raises them to new life. Uh, li quite literally, they are a new creation. So as believers, when we accept Christ into our lives, uh, we are regenerated. Now at Cornerbrook Baptist Church and throughout the CBAC, one of the requirements for church membership is that a person would have had to have had this regenerative experience in their life as evidenced by uh, their confession and the fruit of their life. Um, members uh, must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so uh, that, is, that is something that our church practices as well as, uh, uh, as uh, all of the CBAC. Now this commitment goes right back to the early church. We read in the book of Acts, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now while there was no formal uh, membership process, uh, what's very clear is that these uh, new believers were very committed to each other. They were very committed to the church. They were very committed to spiritual practices. Now, throughout history, Baptists have practiced regenerate church membership. Now, you'll remember over the past couple of sessions, we've talked about how Baptists have stood up for religious liberty. And church membership, believe it or not, has a lot to do with religious liberty. Uh, I, and I want to read right from Pastor Cal's notes here because... Uh, as he says it very well. He says that uh, the separatists from the Church of England in the first decade of the 17th century, which became differentiated as Baptists, began as people strongly attached to the idea that membership in a local church was not an act of the state or accomplished by a rite administered to an infant. In other words, it upholds religious liberty, uh, membership does, uh, simply because it's an act of the will. It's a choice that you make as an adult. It's not an act of the state, and it's not a right administered to you as an infant. Now, your church membership, regenerate church membership, is, uh, is a choice that, uh, that you make. And historically, that's been the view of, uh, of Baptists. There are three reasons why membership is really important. The first one is this. Uh, membership is important for community. It's the basis of uh, our fellowship that we are devoted to each other and devoted to a church. The second reason is membership is important for unity. Uh, we all have a common belief and a common, uh, common commitment, which is very important for, uh, for unity. And the third reason is that it's important for accountability. Now we'll talk about that in, a, in just a few moments, but um, to be a member of a church means that you are accountable to more than just yourself. So what a covenant does, it focuses uh, a community around a gathered set of beliefs and practices. But it also uh, gives guidelines for what we can call restorative discipline. So when someone becomes a, uh, a member of a church and they would agree to a covenant, there's a sense of commonality when uh, people have uh, committed to something and they know exactly what they are committing to. So discipline within the church can be called restorative discipline. It's not punitive. There's no church prison. <laughs> uh, what discipline does, and the final goal of restorative discipline, is essentially to restore the offender to uh, back into fellowship with the community. And so that's the ultimate goal, the restoration of the person who, uh, who is being disciplined, which is quite different than punitive, it's quite different from, uh, uh, from having to pay the price. Uh, restorative discipline is based on grace. So hopefully discipline will never be necessary, but when it is, we have guidelines by which we can offer them restorative discipline. And again, I, I want to read to you what Pastor Cal says here uh, as to why a church covenant is important. He says here, it calls a community to a high biblical standard in a period recognized for suspicion of commitment to a religious body. Now I've got some questions for you 
as you, uh, as you finish up this session, I wanna ask you, first question uh, is this. If membership were open to anyone without restriction at Cornerbrook Baptist, what can you envision as potential problems? Second question is this. Why does there seem to be such suspicion of membership in churches? The third question. Is a covenant the same as a promise or a pledge? And the fourth question is this. How does church discipline work according to the process outlined in Matthew 18, 15 to 20?